Hi, I'm Frances Carr, a previously alienated mum, speaking out about the insidious abuse that is parental alienation and trying to bring just a little hope to those of you affected by this awful abuse. In this video, I'm going to show you that the abuse of parental alienation is real. And there is really good science out there that backs up this statement. I don't want you to be misinformed and believe that this is a pseudoscience because it is not. This abuse happens in families globally and absolutely anybody can be affected. In universities across the globe, there is so much fantastic research out there that proves that this is the case. And it should be celebrated in the media because this research is groundbreaking and has the power to change the lives of so many children in future generations. But it's not. And your guess is as good as mine as to why it's not. Why do you do it? Money? Mainly? There you go. Have you noticed that since the pandemic, conspiracy theories, fake news, and the term pseudoscience all seem to be far more prevalent in our society? I mean, I was just listening to the radio yesterday, and there are a couple of different podcasts from the BBC talking about conspiracy theories. So trying to figure out the facts from the fakes is becoming increasingly difficult, especially if the messenger is very good at persuading you that they, and only they, are right. Everything seems to be conspiring to undermine our trust. Let's just have a quick recap. What is good science? Well, I found this blog explaining good science in general terms on the Farnham Street Media website that produces articles to inform. And it's tag, and I really like this tag. No spam, no politics, no fluff, no noise. I like that. And I'm going to put a link in the description. So it says, good science is science that adheres to a scientific method, a systematic method of inquiry involving making a hypothesis based on existing knowledge, gathering evidence to test if it is correct, then either disproving it or building support for the hypothesis. Pseudoscience, though, has no basis in scientific method. It does not attempt to follow standard scientific procedures for gathering evidence. The claims involved may be impossible to disprove. Pseudoscience focuses on finding evidence to confirm it, disregarding disconfirmation. Practitioners invent narratives to preemptively ignore any actual science that contradicts their own views. It may adopt the appearance of actual science to look far more persuasive. And only today, this all came up in my Twitter feed. It pretty much sums up pseudoscience, quite rightly. Sir Andrew McFarnan has said, the family court adopts a rigorous approach to the admission of expert evidence. As the ref references in this memorandum make plain, pseudoscience, which is not based on any established body of knowledge, will be inadmissible in the family court. So, what? on earth is the problem? That all makes total sense to me. This is the problem. Just take a glance at those tweets and the headlines. It would appear that according to these women, parental alienation is pseudoscience. These women have serious influence. They have been on TV talking about parental alienation. Adrian Barnett actually compiled the literature review that informed the harm report 
which advised the UK government prior to the Domestic Abuse Act being passed into law. So surely they must know their stuff. They've got PhDs. One of the tweets says the UN discredits it. I've covered that in another video called Whack-A-Mole. And another tweet says it was removed from the guidance, the statutory guidance to accompany the Domestic Abuse Act. I've covered that in another video, which is called The Abuse That Cannot Be Named. It's all very, very persuasive. Or is it a question of the lady does protest too much, methinks. I just have a not so small incy wincy problem. As I've said before, and I'm going to say again, my daughter and I are both survivors of parental alienation, and there was nothing pseudo about the abuse we both experienced. Nor was there anything pseudo about the hundreds of heartbreaking comments that parents sent to recover our kids in 2021. Many of these comments stated that this abuse had left them feeling suicidal. These were collated as we lobbied the House of Lords to have Baroness Mayer's amendment included in the Domestic Abuse Act 2021. But let's have a closer look at the science, the good science behind parental alienation. Walter, <clears throat> I'm looking at the answer right here. It's staring me in the face. Do I have to spell it out for you? Fresh off the press, Jennifer Harmon has written this. Shooting the messenger, the character assassination of Dr. Richard Gardner. Remember that tweet at the beginning that said gagged by Gardner? As the science behind parental alienation grows increasingly irrefutable, Bad actor activists resort to attacking the reputations of the researchers shining a light in the darkness. And Jennifer, you are doing a fantastic job of shining a light with your research. So, the next time you hear Richard Gardner's name mentioned, please get informed and read Jen's article, because it's spot on. It's interesting, we don't see the same character assassination for Asperger. He was a Nazi war criminal whose work sent many disabled children to the gas chamber in pursuit of the perfect Aryan race. I'm just saying. Anyway, in 2019, Joan Meyer et al. published this. In 2022, Jennifer Harmon and Lorendoz published this, testing the findings of Joan Meyer's paper which is normal scientific practice. You publish your work and another independent scientist takes your work and tries to replicate it. Now, good researchers know having their work challenged and argued against is a positive thing. It makes them stronger. They don't shy away from it. This is what Harmon and Lorendos found. Just take a look. Define in a replicable way what is meant by alienation cases. Clearly describe cases included or excluded. And again, I'll put the link to this infographic in the description. Do you know, it's really scary that this research has been used to inform policy in the US and probably influence it here in the UK too. Another sign of good science is that it uses a reasonable representative sample size. A representative sample represents a wider population, not one segment of it. If it does not, then the results may only be relevant for the people in that demographic and not for everyone. Bad science will often use very small sample sizes. And of course, it could lead to biased conclusions. Academics researching parental alienation tell me that their research must reflect the wider population to ensure that the research findings are a true representation of the issues in society, especially if government policy hangs on the findings of such result. The quality of this data is vital, and the larger the better. It takes time to compile quality research. 
If you look at the harm report and the literature review that Adrian Barnett compiled, you will find that the research was based on a very small number of victim volunteers from working parties within women's domestic abuse charities here in the UK, such as Women's Aid and Refuge. The men's charities were not included and barely given lip service. So already there's a third of victims of domestic abuse excluded from their findings. And I'd like to add that mothers like me, who are victims of parental alienation, would also not have been included since we are not welcome in the, the VAWG, Violence Against Women and Girls Fold, because we maintain parental alienation is not gendered. So, at a rough guess then, and I'm no scientist, we're now getting close to 50% or half of domestic abuse victims not being included in their literature review. And this is supposed to be good science. I'm just asking the questions. That's what the kids call epic fail. I've taken a glance at the literature review and I've found this. Did you see that? I'm just going to read it out just so you're really clear. No studies were identified that explored parenting practices of domestically abusive mothers. I'm just putting it out there and I'm just going to mention the names Sebastian, Logan, Arthur, Star, Baby P, Victoria Colombe. Why on earth would you exclude abusive mothers? There's no excuse for it. You've got Lord Lamming's report and then the serious case review for Baby P. And since the harm report, you've also had the report for Arthur and Star. There is absolutely no excuse. Our children deserve better from us. But I'm not finished yet with the science. Order! Order! I haven't finished! I haven't finished! I have not finished this yet! Oh no. Trauma affects us physically. Just listen to this. The problem with trauma is that when it's over, your body continues to relive it. My name is Bessel van der Kolk. I'm a psychiatrist, neuroscientist, and author of the book, The Body Keeps Its Core. I thoroughly recommend that you listen to the whole of this video. It's not that long. If you've experienced any form of trauma, Six minutes in, he says this. Traumatized people have a tremendous problem experiencing pleasure and joy. But the core issue is our hormones and our physiological impulses that have to do with survival. Your body keeps mobilizing itself to fight. You have all kinds of immunological abnormalities, endocrine abnormalities, and that really devastates your physical health also. Oftentimes the physical problems are longer lasting than the mental problems. Trauma changes our physiology. That's huge. Now, as Baroness Mayer's amendment was being discussed in the House of Lords, Baron Winston made an observation that really struck home to me, and I'll explain why in a moment. What, is, what this amendment is largely about is unquestionably child abuse, which is what Baroness Mayer firmly said in her, uh, in her speech. And research clearly shows that this can have long-term effects on children as they become adults. Moreover, there is the possibility, which is more difficult to show on long-term studies, that traits which a child may develop in consequence of this kind of behavior may be passed on so that a child's own offspring, the grandchildren of a fractured experience, may actually be visited from the grand grandparents down. There's incidentally increasing evidence for a biological mechanism for such inherited behavior, and there's some significant indication that this may be epigenetic, chemical alteration which influences the way that the genes actually function. Evidence is growing, and it may be true in one particular set of conditions which were of growing interest in human development in this particular case. Autism spectrum disorders, so-called ASD, are neurodevelopmental disorders 
in which multiple genetic and epigenetic factors definitely play a role. My own family illustrates this. My daughter, who I was alienated from, now has a son of her own. He is non-verbal, autistic. Is this a coincidence? Until Baron Winston mentioned this, I hadn't made the connection. But in discussion with other teachers and GPs who have had decades of experience like me, we've noticed that ASD is far more prevalent in society now, and that's not just because it's being diagnosed more. Again, I'm just asking questions, which is what we all should be doing. So, let's bring it all to an end. Good science isn't scared of questions. Asking questions is a challenge to prove, refine or refute the original claim. Good policy, too, should be based on good science, reflective of the whole population. Those who continue to peddle arguments that scaremonger politicians away from good science, yet present, dare I say it, science or is it pseudoscience, that does not stand up to scientific scrutiny, or is only representative of a small portion of society, should be treated with great caution or disregarded altogether. Our children deserve the best, and I fear at the moment we are failing them big time. If you've got this far, thanks so much for listening. Please, please, please do not give up hope. Stay strong. There is a growing body of academics, legal eagles and victim advocates like myself fighting to ensure that your voice is heard. And we will be heard because the truth always prevails. Thank you. Please subscribe. I will be making more videos. Bye for now.